The SEC finds themselves in hot water on multiple fronts today as Reps Huizinga and McHenry demand the production of outstanding document requests from the SEC and have threatened committee action amid the continued stonewalling of their efforts by Gary Gensler and Empower Oversight has sued the SEC in a Washington, D.C. court for documents in the whole crypto conflicts uh, controversy that's been ongoing as it pertains to Simpson Thatcher, Bill Hinman, and others because the SEC continues to refuse to provide the documents as they are legally obligated to do. We've seen this happen in the SEC versus Ripple case, and their desire to keep those out of the public eye continues. We'll take a look at both of these important headlines from today, but if we haven't met before, my name's Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. On this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. Let's take a dive into both of these. Now, the McHenry and Huizinga demand for the production of documents from Gary Gensler came out yesterday. So apologies, we're just getting to it today. But they sent this letter to Gensler demanding the SEC produce outstanding documents as previously requested by the committee related to charges recommended against FTX founder SBF, the SEC's proposed climate disclosure rule, and registration information for digital asset entities. Of course, we know that there is no simple form for a registrant to go click to be able to successfully register with the SEC without having to pay massive legal fees and still have no legal clarity. The SEC has consistently and knowingly failed to be responsive to requests from Congress, they write, beginning with the February 10th request for information regarding charges against SBF should the SEC fail to produce the recommendation memo and its supporting evidence and documents before 5 p.m. Friday, May 19th, that's next week, a week from tomorrow, the committee will schedule testimony from the Commission's Legislative Affairs and Office of the General Counsel teams to examine their failure to comply with congressional requests. Here's a quote. The Committee on Financial Services made clear at the start of the 118th Congress that robust oversight of the SEC was forthcoming. The committee also made clear your full cooperation in responding to oversight requests was expected. Since February, the SEC has been less than forthcoming with respect to this committee's request for information. On February 10th, we sent you a request for information about the charges against SBF to date. You've produced 232 uh, documents or pages of documents. Of those, all were publicly available. On March 15th, your staff provided a general briefing about the Division of Enforcement. While informative, this was not responsive to the request. Following that briefing, committee staff offered narrowing terms and an easily identifiable document, the Charges Recommendation Memorandum. After not receiving a responsive production for weeks, we sent a letter on April 12th, and you can see on and on, the committee's requests have not been met. You can tell that they are losing their patience. The SEC continues to delay requests by the people who have oversight of the SEC, by those who they are supposed to be answering to. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Gensler continuing to hide from accountability. Coming back into the document, they say, as an extraordinary accommodation to the SEC, while reserving the right to receive the entire set of documents requested, and with the hope of receiving a timely response to the outstanding requests, the committee has identified the following priority requests. So you can see they're making exceptions to make it even easier for Gensler. Here are the priorities. We're still going to want the others, but get these to us first. First, the SEC must produce documents responsive to request 11 in the schedule of records from February 22nd regarding the climate rule. Second, the SEC must produce documents responsive to the April 26th request about digital asset registration. Both sets should be produced as soon as practicable, but no later than that May 19th date. Finally, 
the committee expects that the charges recommendation memorandum and all supporting evidence and documents be produced no later than that date. If you fail to provide the memorandum and supporting evidence and documents by the deadline, we will examine the committee's calendar to schedule testimony. So really interesting, Gary Gensler might have his posterior dragged before the House Oversight uh, Committee here for financial services, as we've uh, seen before, to, uh, to have to talk about this yet again, because he has not produced what was asked of him. Now, speaking of the SEC's lack of responsiveness in power oversight over the last two years, has been waiting for answers from the SEC. Now they've sued the SEC in a DC court for documents related to the whole crypto conflicts of interest controversy related to Simpson Thatcher, Bill Hinman, and the like. Here's the press release. This one is from earlier today. Empower Oversight filed a complaint against the SEC in the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia seeking to compel the SEC to comply with a December 2022 Freedom of Information Act request regarding conflicts of interest and selective enforcement by high-level officials at the SEC regarding cryptocurrencies. These former officials we've talked about before, Clayton Hinman Berger, those are the ones that have their names mentioned on a regular basis. The December request was an effort to counter the SEC's bad faith gamesmanship in failing to comply with Empower Oversight's initial request more than a year earlier. If you recall, August 2021, Empower submitted a detailed Freedom of Information Act request to the SEC, seeking all communications between senior SEC officials and their former and future employers and related entities regarding crypto. Former senior SEC official Bill Hinman received millions of dollars in compensation from his former employer, Simpson Thatcher, while helping guide the SEC's enforcement decisions on cryptos. Simpson Thatcher was part of a group that promoted Ethereum, a crypto Hinman publicly declared was not a security in his infamous speech, while the SEC claimed in enforcement actions that other similar cryptos like XRP were unregistered securities. Since then, Empower has been at the forefront of this battle for SEC transparency. In December of 21, Empower filed a suit in the Eastern District of Virginia against the SEC, seeking to compel the agency to provide responsive documents to FOIA requests. And on February 23rd of this year, Empower supported a motion with Judge Torres in the Southern District of New York to gain access to pertinent SEC documents. The SEC's failure to provide any transparency they write on this issue is making a bad situation look even worse. We're approaching two years since Empower made its initial request in a year and a half since our first lawsuit, yes, the, yet the SEC has consistently stonewalled any attempts to shed light on these clear conflicts of interest at the agency. This new suit against the SEC should force the SEC to do the searches it knows it must do under the law to give the public the answers we've long sought, says the president of Empower Oversight a year ago. Empower sent a referral to the SEC Inspector General based on documents that raised questions about the failure of the SEC and its ethics office to properly manage these conflicts of interest. In October of 2022, they filed an opposition to the SEC's motion for summary judgment in the ongoing Freedom of Information Act lawsuit over documents related to this conflict of interest and, of course, selective enforcement, shielding Ethereum coming after assets like XRP and even Library. Let me know what you think. Will we ever see these documents? Will the SEC ever be held accountable, whether it's in the courts here or by the House Financial Services Committee? Will we see that ever truly happen? I'm eager to know what your thoughts are, but I hope, as always, that this was helpful for you. If it was, drop a like. It helps channel a ton and helps me keep you informed. Everything linked down below. As always, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so I can keep you up to date on all the latest. Thank you so much for spending some time here with me. I do truly appreciate it. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.